So this is my uh, third uh, generation um, solar generator that I built for myself. It's got uh, the 110 volts, the meter, um, USB fans, uh, a bunch of stuff. Um, and I'm actually going to give this to a friend of mine who um, does a lot of camping. And I, since I bought my new, uh, you know, LiPo 4 version, I, you know, this is just sitting around. So I'm going to give this to him for, to use on his camping trips. Um, the only problem with it is uh, the battery cells have been drifting a little bit. I notice when I leave this on the shelf for a while, um, three, four months, and I check it, the cells have drifted. So there's probably a, a self-discharging just cell in the pack. So I've got to make a decision on on what I want to do about it. Um, here is the battery. I already pulled out the battery. Whoa. And let's plug in my ISDT meter. And let's see here. Can you? So this this was put away fully charged and balanced. And you can see we got four volts, four volts. 3.6, 3.7, 4 volts, almost 4 volts, almost 4 volts. So I'm fine with 1, 2, uh, 4, 5, and 6, or 5, 6, and 7 packs. It's 3 and 4 that are that have drifted low. So they probably have a couple self-discharging cells in the pack. Um, so I need to make a decision what I'm going to do. I mean, I could, I could do nothing um, and just... You know, tell them to charge it up at least once a month, and but then we're relying on the BMS to to really try and rebalance these cells, and uh, that could be an issue. Um, or I need to try and find those self-discharging cells. Now, the problem, part of the problem, is this is one of my original designs with the um, where I soldered the individual fuse legs on. These days, I do a lot of spot welding, and I probably would have spot welded this. Um, so to find those self-discharging cells, I'm probably going to have to go and cut all the fuses on three and four and let these cells sit for a minute and check back on it in a few days and see if there's any individual batteries that have drifted, um, from the rest of the batteries. And then I have to make the decision, am I going to, and let's say I do find those cells, I can, I can clip the little plastic nubs and slide a cell out and put in a replacement cell. It, it can be done. Um, so I'm not worried about that. The, the question is, am I going to re-solder everything or am I going to rip off all of this and, and spot weld the whole battery? This is 210 cells, I believe, which is, that's quite a lot of spot welding. And, um, you know, doing the fuses, you know, it's cool for safety, but going in a portable solar generator that's going camping and hiking, these fuses are susceptible to to getting damaged. Now, I do wrap it in in foam, um, but you know, you you could you could you know you could stress a fuse, um, carrying this around and banging it around. Um, so I have to decide if I want to spot weld this thing or if I want to. Um, you know, if assume I do find the the bad cells here, I'm gonna have to um, you know decide what I want to how I want to reassemble this pack. But I guess let's start by I'm gonna snip. I've already labeled that's three, and uh, what's this? That's one, two. That's three, three and four here. I'm gonna snip the fuses on three and four. <clears throat> and then um, let them sit for a minute and see if I can find um, which are the self-discharging cells. Okay, I think you just saw me snip all the fuses on cells three and four. I I have snipped the backside of the fuses only. 
you only have to disconnect one side of the battery um, in order to kind of electrically separate them and then I can check the voltage on these individually to see which one is is out of spec um, but um, and there's a reason I, I snipped the back side of the fuse when you solder batteries for some reason it is way easier to get the solder to stick on the big back side the negative side of the of the 18650s it's always a bit of a, a trick getting the solder to stick on the positive side of 18650s so that's why I've snipped the back side because it'll be easier to repair the back side and I think I have decided to just sort of um, keep all the fuses and and um, keep I mean everything's already here I just got to figure out which cells are, are misbehaving and pop them out put in new ones and add a few fuses back so I think I'm gonna keep the keep the um, the soldered connections on this battery but in the meantime now we play a waiting game and and see uh, which cells start to deviate I have jotted down my the voltage that the battery started at um, and uh, you know probably within a day or two we'll probably already find cells that are drifting from that and those are the ones we'll pop out um, so I just gotta go find a couple of these purple uh, LG's in my storage um, box somewhere so I, I have some replacements and then whichever ones are bad what you do is you actually kind of clip these plastic tabs that are in the cell and then you can actually push the cell right out um, and then slide in a new one and uh, you know uh, you know reattach the fuses and stuff and that's uh, how we'll repair this um, yeah I think that's it for now so I found this uh, box of these L uh, purple LGs and um, these were all put away fully charged that's just how I, I store my batteries and um, these have been sitting for probably six months if not a year and 4 4.13, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.13. So for setting at least six months, none of these are self-discharging. These are holding their, their voltage beautifully. So um, these are definitely some good cells. I like that. Um, so these will be the cells that I replace uh, whatever duds I find with. So I will say right off the bat, I actually, I multimetered all the cells after I cut them. And I've already found a few um, suspicious ones where the voltage is, is, already, is, is low or they might not have actually been connected correctly to the bus bar because some of them are actually reading high, which means they were not electrically in parallel. So, um, however, this cell is 100% dead. It has zero voltage. It's not a connection issue. I put my multimeter on both sides of this cell. It is 100% dead. Um, so I am going to have to cut that one out. This one here appears to have a bit of rust on it. Um, and that one is also is showing a bit low. Visually, signs of rust um, and, and some discoloration implies that there might be um, some electrolyte leaking. Um, and this one is is low so we will keep an eye on that one but I am gonna actually have to physically cut out this battery because it is definitely um, it's dead dead so that's the first one we have to replace you can see I cut the little tabs around that cell and now I can actually slide this cell out and um, uh, put in a put in a new one. You can you can see here on the volt voltmeter. This battery is 0 0.03 volts. It is dead, completely dead. So yeah, this is a junker. So we'll put in a we'll put in a, a replacement cell, and then we'll keep an eye on the other ones.
So while I was pulling out batteries, I realized something. Not all of the batteries when I originally built this were the LG um, M26 batteries. I remember I was a short a few batteries and so I had, I had sprinkled in amongst all the packs some other LGs. Um, these are lower capacity modem ba pack batteries. Um, and I had evenly sprinkled them amongst the parallel rows so that capacity would be the same between the parallel rows. But I was noticing when I was, the, when I was marking cells that I thought looked a little suspect or that were dead or, or low voltage, it was always these ones. It was, I didn't mark a single one of the um, M26 batteries. So in the end, I actually went through this entire thing and you might have seen it on the time lapse. I pulled out every single one of the non-M26 batteries. And I happened to have some other um, M26s and um, I went through and replaced every single battery that wasn't, you know, one of these M26 batteries. So, uh, yeah, I think it was just, I think these mixed cells, these just weren't quite the quality that the M26s were. So they're out and everything in here is back together. So the pack is rebuilt and I'm in the middle of using my multimeter to check that every single battery in a parallel pair has the same voltage. That's how you know that the battery is electrically connected. And I just found a cold solder joint. Um, yeah, which one is it? It's this one here. Um, let me zoom in here. Yeah. the. Although it's kind of connected, it's not really connected. It's sort of sitting on top of the solder. And so this battery is showing a different voltage than all the others in the parallel pair. So that has to be re-flowed and, re and, and fixed before I can uh, continue. Okay, so I think this battery is electrically repaired. And now we just need to rebalance the cells. Um, almost all the packs are at 4 volts except 3 and 4, which are at 3.6 and 3.7 volts. So what I'll do is I'll use my bench power supply and um, throw voltage at three, uh, uh, pack three and pack four and, th and bring them, and I'll just set it at four volts, bring them up to four volts, then I'll plug in an official, my official like uh, iCharge or ISDT and do a balance. Uh, it's, uh, it's probably a bit slow to balance them using um, the, the iCharger directly. Um, so I'll throw voltage at, uh, at packs three and four bring them up to four volts even and then I'll let my eye charger do the charging. Okay, so um, I let the eye charger here um, balance this pack and then I actually had to go on a business trip so that was four days ago. Um, when I left I pulled off the eye charger because it was done balancing and all the cells were looking really healthy. So it's been sitting four days. We can have a look at how uh, the cells are looking now. Um, yeah, every single pack is 4.08. That is nice and healthy. So these batteries have stayed balanced. I don't think there's anything self-discharging. Um, so that's good. I also literally just went through and metered every single cell on this entire battery, all 210 cells, and every single cell metered at 4.08 volts, which means there are no cells which are electrically disconnected or have a bad fuse or a cold solder joint. Every single battery is properly soldered and now part of this pack. So this pack is ready to go in service and uh, we are done.